If you've been feeling overwhelmed with anxiety lately, try listening to a guided meditation on the Meditation for Anxiety podcast. Meditation is a proven natural way to help you calm down and dissolve stress so you can feel lighter and happier. So subscribe for free today to the Meditation for Anxiety podcast by searching for Meditation for Anxiety on your favorite podcast player. Have you ever noticed how a calm mind can really set the stage for a good night's sleep? That's the idea behind our new podcast, Good Sleep. Greg, our host from Optimal Relationships Daily, is here to help ease you into a peaceful night's rest with some positive affirmations. And these affirmations aren't just comforting, they can help ease anxiety and nurture positive thoughts, setting you up for true good sleep. So, press play on good sleep tonight because a good tomorrow starts with a good night's sleep. Just search for good sleep in your podcast app and be sure to pick the one from Optimal Living Daily. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2344. Tips for burning more fat with cold thermogenesis and why icing really does work. Part two by Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldlife.com and I'm Dr. Neil. Hey there, and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online. Now, for a lot more blogs being narrated for you, check out Optimal Living Daily. You can search and find that podcast wherever you're listening to this. Now, today's episode is part two of a longer post. So if you missed part one, then I'd recommend going back and listening to that first. That was episode 2343. But if you're all caught up, Let's get right to part two and continue optimizing your life. Tips for burning more fat with cold thermogenesis and why icing really does work. Part two by Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldlife.com. Higher metabolism and lower blood sugar. Cold exposure can cause blood glucose to be burned rapidly as fuel to assist in heating the body or stored in muscles to enhance recovery or performance. Before that, blood sugar can potentially be converted to fat via the liver. So while I'm not trying to give you an excuse to cheat on your diet and then use cold thermogenesis, it can come in handy should you slip up and eat too much ice cream. When the metabolism of human BAT is studied using a combination of positron emission tomography, or PET, combined with computed tomography, or CT, Glucose uptake has been observed to increase 12-fold in BAT by exposure to cold temperatures, along with a significant increase in metabolism and energy expenditure. Are you getting the idea that cold exposure might be helpful? Well, the benefits don't stop with what I've just listed, but I thought at least I'd give you a taste of just a few of the upsides to cold exposure. So, should you ice after a workout? In the meantime, however, Despite all the benefits of cold exposure, when it comes to using cold or ice post-workout, there seems to be a sudden doubting of icing's efficacy across the internet and in several magazines. The argument goes something like this. When an injury occurs, your body creates inflammation as a healing response. So if inflammation is the body's natural way to heal an injury, why would you want to block this inflammatory process with ice? I have a more comprehensive response to this argument against ice. In fact, it's forthcoming in Lava Magazine. But let me give you four good reasons why, in addition to the cold thermogenesis benefits I described earlier, you actually should ice after a long or especially hard workout, and why I wear my tight, stretchy, geeky pants post-hard run or bike ride filled with ice. One, ice does not completely reduce inflammation-based swelling but ice can prevent excessive swelling after the initial injury occurs. While some swelling certainly does have important healing components, such as white blood cells and other chemicals that are involved in the healing process, migrating into damaged tissues through increased vascular permeability, it also physically protects an injured area by decreasing its potential range of motion. And so there is no physiological reason to allow swelling to freely progress for hours or days after an injury occurs, especially if you're smart enough to have ice around. In fact, prevention of excessive swelling is important 
because the fluid that has escaped into the tissues from excessive swelling can create a low oxygen environment, also known as a hypoxic environment, that can then lead to additional tissue damage and delay healing. In addition, swelling can cause distension in joint capsules and other tissues, and excitation of nervous system components called mechanoreceptors, which can increase pain. Ice simply reduces this effect by causing vasoconstriction, or shrinking of blood vessels, around the vasculature surrounding an injury. Two, the cold temperature of ice can slow down nerve conduction velocity and shut down the activation of your muscle spindles, making it a highly effective pain reliever and muscle relaxant. If a muscle is in less pain and is more relaxed, then mobilization and movement become a reality and a return to functional training status can occur much more quickly which can limit muscle atrophy or loss of fitness. Three, ice also reduces metabolic activity in the tissues that you ice, making them better able to resist the damaging effects of the impending loss of oxygen from inflammatory swelling pressure. In other words, lower tissue temperatures from icing mean less oxygen is required by your muscles to sustain their integrity. Four, finally, as you learned in point one, Ice causes vasoconstriction, or shrinking of blood vessels. But unless you're in extreme conditions where you must shuttle blood to your brain and vital organs to survive, your body will avoid tissue death by not allowing the body part you're icing to cool excessively. Through a process called reactive vasodilation, also known as the hunting reflex or Lewis reflex, your vessels, while being exposed to cold, create a negative pressure in the capillary system which causes pumping of inflammatory and metabolic byproducts out of an injured area, while allowing additional healing components such as macrophages and white blood cells to mobilize in the area. When combined with pressure and elevation, this pumping action of ice can be an extremely effective rehabilitation tool. And you can observe this in nature by simply jumping into a cold lake for about 20 minutes and watching your skin slowly turn red as reactive vasodilation occurs. How you can learn more about cold exposure and other tricks. The fact is, sitting around on my computer while wearing a cool fat burner vest, wearing stretchy pants that combine pressure and ice, or keeping quick wraps in my freezer are just a very few of the little things I do to enhance physical or mental performance. As promised, I have a list of studies for you to peruse on this blog post. If you'd like to study up some more on the benefits of cold thermogenesis. You just listened to part two of the post titled Tips for Burning More Fat with Cold Thermogenesis and Why Icing Really Does Work by Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldlife.com. If I would have kept making only the minimum payments on my credit cards, my debt would have taken me 47 years to pay off. These are real National Debt Relief customers. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get out of debt by myself. Credit card, medical, or personal loan debt? National Debt Relief negotiates with your creditors to reduce what you owe. National Debt Relief got me out of debt? You could be debt-free in as little as 24 to 48 months. Visit nationaldebtrelief.com to learn more and get started. nationaldebtrelief.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I love that Ben provided us with a list of studies that support his arguments. We always need to look at well-designed studies to know whether a recommendation is evidence-based or simply just anecdotal, meaning it worked for them or just their friends, but there aren't studies showing whether it truly works. But we have to be careful because even with study, we always wanna make sure we ask ourselves whether this behavior is right for us. There are some studies that show dunking yourself in an ice bath after a particularly grueling workout may increase free radical production in the body. Free radicals are potentially harmful compounds, and they're believed to increase our risk for a number of diseases like cancer, dementia, and even premature aging. Now, we do need more studies to explore this idea of free radical production in ice baths after a workout, because how does that jive with all the evidence that Ben presented? Well, it just means we probably need more time to research all of this. But in the meantime, if you and your doctor decide that exposing your body to cold more often is a good idea, then by all means, give it a try 
and see if it helps. If, based on you and your doctor's assessment of cold thermogenesis and whether it's right for you, you both decide that it's more likely to provide you with benefits than harms, then again, by all means, try it out. All right, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening every day. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.